Hey guys, welcome to Mental. So in this video, we are going to look at the pharmacology, pharmacology of the CNS, that is the central nervous system. So basically, this is going to be a just introduction. So we are going to start a new video lectures on the pharmacology. So make sure you stick to stick to the video till the end. So beginning with the pharmacology CNS introduction, we have let's look at the neurotransmitters in the brain so what are the neurotransmitters that are happening in the brain and any drug you give it affects with these neurotransmitters that will result in the whatever the results that we want to achieve so what are the neurotransmitters we have acetylcholine then we have the noradrenaline we have serotonin we have glutamate aspartate gaba glycine and dopamine so we have acetylcholine noradrenaline serotonin glutamate aspartate gaba glycine and dopamine so these are all the neurotransmitters found in the brain so we have two types of excitatory uh, two types of neuropotentials in the brain we have the excitatory potential as well as the inhibitory potential excitatory potential will help in excitation and inhibitory will help in uh, inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter will help in inhibition of the transmission so we have the acetylcholine and noradrenaline and uh, noradrenaline and serotonin and all the three will help in mediating both the inhibition as well as the excitation effects in the brain then we have the glutamate and the aspartate these both will help in mediating the excitatory effects in the brain then we have the gaba glycine and dopamine they help in mediating the inhibitory effects on the brain so these are the three effects formed in the Brain. We have uh, these uh, all the neurotransmitters and they help in mediating both the inhibition as well as the excitatory effects. So as I told you we have two excitatory potentials that is the excitatory post synaptic potential or EPSP then we have the inhibitory post synaptic potential IPSP. So what are the manifestations of CNS depression? So when the inhibition is uh, activated so what are the manifestations that we can see in, from the CNS depression? We can see the drowsiness the person feels drowsy we can feel the person is uh, sedated or feeling sleepy the person might undergo hypnosis the person might also feel disorientation confusion unconscious unconsciousness finally coma and death so these are all the manifestations of the cns depression drowsiness sedation hypnosis disorientation confusion unconsciousness coma and death so what are the manifestations of manifestations of the cns stimulation so we have the excitement, feeling excited. Then we have the euphoria, where you feel everything is uh, so wonderful around the world. Then if you are uh, insomnia, you can't just sleep. Then we can see tremors, the tremors. Then we can see twitching, convulsions, and finally, if uh, excitations goes too much, they might land in coma and death. <clears throat> so these are the manifestations of the CNS stimulation. We have excitement, euphoria, insomnia, tremors twitching, convulsions, coma and death. So this is about the basic CNS neurotransmitters and their functions as this excitation and inhibition. Now moving on to the pharmacology of sedatives and hypnotics. So what is sedation? Sedation is nothing but as feeling of drowsy and calm. You just feel sleepy but are not sleeping. So feeling of drowsy and calm is the sedation. Then what is hypnotic? Hypnotics is nothing but as the induction of sleep. So this is about the sedation and hypnotic. Then uh, following the, now let's look at the classifications of the sedatives and hypnotics. So under classification, we have a first class called as the benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines denoted by BJ, BZDs. So what are the examples of benzodiazepines? We have diazepam, lorazepam, clonazepam. Then we have medazolam, alprazolam, oxazepam. We have clobazam and chlorodiazepoxide, etc. So this is about the first classification called as the benzodiazepines. We have diazepam, lorazepam, clonazepam, medazolam, alprazolam, oxazepam, globazam, chlorodiazepoxide, and etc. Then moving on to the next top, the next heading that is the barbiturates. So we have three types that is the long acting, short acting, and ultra short acting. Moving on to the long acting, long acting the barbiturate is called as the phenobarbitone. Then we have the short acting called as the pentobarbitone. Then we have ultra short acting in the barbiturates that is the thiopentone sodium. So these are the long acting, short acting and ultra short acting of the barbiturates. Phenobarbitone, pentobarbitone and the thiopentone. Then we also have some of the non-benzodiazepine hypnotics as well. They are examples such as the zolpidem as well as the zopiclone. So this is about the classifications of the sedatives and hypnotics. 
benzodiazepines, barbiturates and non-benzodiazepine hypnotics. So we'll have a separate video on the benzodiazepines, barbiturates as well. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching video till the end. Make sure to subscribe, hit, hit the like button and share this uh, lecture with other friends and people who want to learn more about the pharmacology part. So thank you for uh, subscribing I guess and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.